Welcome back, guys. This week, we're going a little west. We're going somewhere where you can marvel at what some would call the Grand Canyon, also known as the world's largest ditch. We're talking about the current NBA champions. Doesn't really count, COVID. Also, we're talking the Chimney fucking Changa. One of the greatest culinary delights blending Mexican and American and just decadence. I'm talking a deep fried burrito. Who would have thought? Woody Johnson from Makaya Mexican Kitchen in Arizona in 1946 invented the dish strictly out of curiosity. The deep fryer's on, why not put a burrito in that? Why not give it a shot? Shots unlike a gentleman by the name of Mark Godot, who in the years of 2005 to 2006 reigned terror all throughout the roads of Phoenix and Tucson in Arizona. Simultaneously along with him, even crazier things were going on, but we are talking about a monster of the deepest depravity. We are talking a true dickhead. This guy is one of the worst people to ever grace the good old state of Arizona. This is the case of Mark Godot, and this is Crime and Die. Let's take it back. Arizona, 2006. There's a terrible crime spree going on. We don't know what's going down, who's responsible, or very well how this is gonna end up. But it all starts with a man born on September 6th, 1964. A man by the name of Mark Godot. Now Mark, not much is known about him, honestly. I looked up everything I could. I really couldn't find anything significant. That's how fucking much of a loser this guy is. Doesn't even have a history. The only history that does come up in reference to Mark is that he did do a stint in jail for uh, assaulting a female. And I'm assuming you know exactly what I mean by that. And then it just kind of leads up to him getting out. And once he gets out, he links up with a lady and they're, they're fine. She doesn't care about his history. She forgave him. He's reformed. He's a good dude. And they're living their life. He's an electrician, construction worker, kind of a jack of all trades, this guy. Not just a jackass dickhead who's a criminal. He's also, you know, pretty handy. Now, being handy, and be that as it may, he made his way around the city, and he really got to know, you know, Arizona in its entirety. He had been literally everywhere. I mean, he grew up there his entire life. So when it comes to his crimes and his ability to get away with it, Super easy for him. He knows the places to go. He knows where to hide things. He knows where to find the people he is preying upon. And as the years progress, he finally gets the urge to act out the thing that put him in jail the first time. But as we all know, I ain't never going back as a mentality. And best way to do that, according to the fast food killer, never leave a witness. And that's exactly what Mark is gonna do. And we kick it off. August of 2005, he goes ahead and finds uh, two women. One of them is actually pregnant, and they're sisters, and they're traveling together, as, you know, family does. As they're doing that, he walks up upon them with a gun and forces them behind a church and essentially says, I'm going to have my way with you. And when they go to fight back, the one sister is pregnant. He puts the gun right into her stomach and has his way with these women and then he gets away. And you would think that like one a month is pretty reasonable, but as it turns out, he's insatiable. I mean, this guy goes ahead and we're talking maybe 10 days later, finds another unsuspecting, unsuspecting victim, turns around, holds her at gunpoint, and assaults her as well. Now, this guy just, again, insatiable, going around town and not even really taking breaks. And he just, since he's grown up in Arizona, he knows all the places to go where he probably won't get caught, exactly who to prey on. You know, I mean, a lot of these people are minorities and a lot of these people are, you know, uh, some of them are just not really reliable. You know, they might have their own issues and more destitute than others. And so again, he's just preying on the weaker people and it sucks. So we go forward and without even skipping a beat, 
maybe another 10 days after that assault, we have a robbery and an assault. So not only is he just taking away from a woman something she can never get back and just degrading her in such a level, he also has to take personal items. And we're not talking just your run of the mill, hey, I took her wallet, hey, I took her, you know, her purse or her credit cards. I mean, he's keeping clothes from after the assaults. He's keeping all these ridiculous keepsakes. So there's all that nonsense that's going on. And then on top of that, he goes ahead and this is where he will commit his first homicide. Now, the body was like unidentified. It had been decomposed. It had been found by a businessman sitting in some bushes as he was going on a walk. He noticed a foul odor. And as he was walking, he went to investigate. And thereupon, he came uh, the body of a woman that was badly decomposed. And because that is the way it is, it was hard for them to identify. And had <laughs> this fucking guy, had that not been enough in September as well, we have another crime. And... We're talking about him approaching two more sisters and doing exactly what he did to the first ones when he started the spree in August. From there, we're going to just keep going on. I mean, it's just ridiculous. We just keep going and keep going, and we come to uh, two more days in September, the same day, the 28th, the exact same day. He commits two assaults on women and one robbery. Now, we're starting to notice a pattern here, right? What we're noticing is that every time there's an assault, there's more than likely going to be a robbery. And every time I can tell you this from the information, there isn't an assault, there's a murder. Because this guy had to get what he wanted at all times. And that's exactly what happens on November 3rd. He goes through and he assaulted one person that day, because that's what he does. But that wasn't enough. So... He goes ahead and finds another person, but they're fighter. They're not gonna. They're not gonna, you know, stand for his stuff really at all. And they fight back, and unfortunately, that results in them being murdered. So right now, as it stands, we have, I believe, three homicides, multiple robberies, and multiple sexual assaults, all in a span of. 30 days. And continuing through November. Once you pop, you don't stop. So they say, this guy continues, Mark keeps going on his crime spree. So there's a robbery in November. Three different places, because one wasn't enough. A Little Caesars, some lovely local Mexican restaurant, and also just a pizza shop. And then we go to December, the 12th specifically. And this, to me, is unforgivable on so many levels, despite all the things that this guy's already done, despite all the bullshit. A woman walking home from her job at a preschool, he approaches her, obviously tries to do what he does, and because she's not compliant, because she's standing her ground, because she's a strong woman, he does what he always does when he doesn't get his way. And unfortunately, she meets her end. He shoots her. And all these people that he has shot, right to the head. He's quick and careless about it. Leaves them right where they lay. The new year comes around. So we're done with 05. We're in 06. We're going to February. And in February, they find a woman by the name of Romelia Vargas and her friend Mima Palmer Roman. They both worked in the same snack truck together, and so he had forced them out at gunpoint, and in doing so, carried out his assault. No witnesses, execution style once again. Taken into March, another double homicide of uh, Choi Chow, sorry if I butchered your name, and Sanchez Corilea, and they were employees of a place called Yoshi's. Again, same MO. Leading onwards from there, we could go to March again. Nicole Gibbons, she's taken later in March, and he's just, he's just no signs of slowing down. This every single month, like clockwork. We're not losing any speed. I could go through and break down every single one of these. I mean, there's one in May. There's another one in June from 
August of 2005 till June of 2006, we're talking about nine homicides. We're talking a grand total of 93 felonies. 19 of them came from the assault of the two sisters alone, the pregnant one where he held the gun to her stomach. 19 of those came just from that. The other 73, 74 were carried out afterwards. So imagine that. Imagine how long this guy just kept going, never slowed down whatsoever. And when the police finally catch up to him, he pulls the hole. It wasn't me. You got the wrong guy, like they all typically do. I was framed. You were duped into thinking it was me. It couldn't have been me. There's no way. What was me? All this nonsense. Well, Mark, we're going to go through and we're going to get our due, we're going to get our due diligence. We're going to get our justice. We're going to do this right. Because at the end of the day, we're in Arizona and you're fucked. With all this going on with this Mark guy, the terror that he's raining upon Arizona through 2005 and 2006, we have two other assholes, Dale Hausner and Samuel Dietman. Now they are known as the spree shooters. These are just some wild fucking guys who had nothing better to do with their time than cause mischief like a bunch of children, a bunch of spoiled little brats these dudes were. So as they're going through the city, they go ahead and at random, they don't have an M.O. They're not really, you know, picking anybody out. There's no type, any of that. They just randomly go up to people in their car while they're driving along, and they commit a drive-by. They just start shooting. Could be anyone. You could be walking down the street. This car passes you. Boom, boom. It's over. I mean, it was to the point where they had shot a total of 25 people, six of which died. And that wasn't it. They also shot animals. They had gone through and committed arson. Just a general fucking around assholes. So if you parry that with the idea and the knowledge of what's going on with Mark Godot, Arizona had to be a literal nightmare. One of the scariest places on the planet. Rivals any haunted house tenfold. I mean, in a sense, it is a local war zone between these guys. The bullets are flying, the people are dying. And where do you go from there? The fear that just crippled the entirety of that city, a city that people were joyous. I mean, there's like, it's basically like Florida is retirement place. So is Arizona. I mean, it's pretty lovely. It's a nice place. Even though I talked a little shit, it's a nice place. They got, a, you know, solid homes, great looking atmosphere. If you're into dreary, dry stuff. And then, you know, the people I hear are great. And these guys are going around making it so difficult for you just to feel safe, to compromise someone's feeling of safety. I can only imagine how they felt. But don't you guys worry. It's coming up on these assholes. All three of them. Now we're coming to a close. The heat's out there. These guys have been acting fools. The cops are looking for him. They've got the evidence, especially on Mark. Mark is a former felon, as we know. So they have his DNA on file. They have it recorded because of his crime that he had committed previously. The cops, they go ahead. They come after Samuel and Dale and Mark aggressively. And they finally nail it down. Mark denies it. He says, oh... I'm the only black guy in the neighborhood. You're mad at me because like I'm establishing myself and we need a scapegoat and the DNA wasn't even there. You guys planted it and maybe that would be the case for one. If there had only been one victim or had you killed all your victims because multiple victims were assaulted and survived. They fingered him. He'd wear his disguises. He would wear dreadlocks. He would wear a fishing cap. He would just look like a general weirdo sometimes in a Halloween costume. But the one damning thing that this guy did that really came back to bite him in the ass was he decided with his final victim that he couldn't wait. Not at all. And when he attacked and murdered her, it was all caught on camera. Sorry, buddy. You've been caught. You're fucked. They go ahead and... Charge him. He's charged with all the counts again. 93 counts of felonies. Um, 
uh, nine murders he's, he's hit with. And Samuel and Dale, they're hit with six murders. And because Dale's a pussy, he makes a plea deal to testify against Samuel. And from there, he only gets a limited amount of time. But both Mark and Samuel are, are, go to trial and are sentenced to death. You fucked. They go through their appeals. They're, they're, they're exacerbating every option. No, I didn't do it. Like, it, it's all crazy. I, I can't believe this is happening to me. Like, I would never do that. I'm a nice person. I'm a scapegoat for somebody else. You've got the wrong freaking guy. And they go through that and they just keep going and, again, exhaust all their appeals. So at the end of the day, they're sitting there waiting on their execution. To this day, it has not gone forward. But all we have is time. We can enjoy that and one day know these assholes will get what's due. Now this right here, air fryer. One, makes it easier so I don't have to tie this off because I know traditionally a chimichanga is supposed to be deep fried and you got to make a slurry and you got to seal the edges and everything. And that sounds all well and good, but we've advanced since 1946. We can figure it out. It's not sticks and stones anymore. It's a lot of tech going on and we can just throw this bad boy air fryer and not have to worry about the seal breaking or anything. There you have it, folks. It's over for those guys. It's a wrap. They're there forever until they die. They're gonna have the worst Taco Tuesdays of all time. I'm telling you right now. But thanks to a Mr. Woody Johnson, 1946 and Curiosity, we have the chimichanga. And ours looks great. I mean, putting it in the air fryer, I think is fantastic. It's not that big a deal. It's got a great outer shell. It looks wonderful. It's completely cooked through. We're just gonna hit it with a little. Uh, fell off, that's my fault. Touch of cilantro. Touch a fresh sliced jalapeno, a little bit of onion, some gojita cheese from the top, and let's get after it. That crunch is right there. Oh wow, little cheese pool. It's gonna melt my entire face. Bro. If I'm being honest. Fuck Chipotle, this is better burrito. 110%, definitely make it crispy. The inside has all the freshness from that pico, uh, a little bit of that hatch chili sauce we put on there. The refried beans are even great. I'm not a huge fan of refried beans, but it just plays off texturally really well. Creating that tomato and chipotle pepper sauce we mixed in with the beef, killer. And just that touch of cheese on the inside, it really just, it sets it off. Couldn't have anything better. Okay guys, with that, I mean, definitely give it a go. Again, fantastic, tastes great. You could easily do this at home. You literally don't need this long of a video to figure this out. And go ahead, hit that notification bell, subscribe to our channel, give us a like, throw it out in the comments what I did wrong, what you wanna do, what you wanna learn more about. This has been Crime and Death. Stay safe out there.